Once an addict, always an addict. I'm Dr. Hassan Tawhid. I treat drug and alcohol abuse in my private counseling practice. Few years ago, when I was working at a drug rehab facility, I had a patient who was a lifer, who spent around 25 years in prison. He was mandated by the court to go through some counseling sessions as a condition of his parole, and my responsibility was to keep him clean for the rest of his stay. During this time, what I observed was that he was one of the nicest human beings that you can ever imagine. He had no signs and symptoms that would classify him to be an addict. Yet, my responsibility was to keep him clean for the rest of his stay. He was such a man that every patient used to look up to him. And I used to ask him to facilitate the group counseling sessions because of the wisdom he had. Similarly, I had seen so many patients who had been like this, and I have seen so many people who quit using five years ago, 10 years ago, 15, 20, 30 years ago, and went on to become wonderful counselors, recovery coaches, healers, and helpers. Looking at all of these people, the question that bothered me the most was that why do we say this, that once an addict, always an addict? Why do we call them recovering addict? In fact, if you see the Alcohol Anonymous meetings, the AA meetings, people usually introduce themselves like this. Hi, I'm John. I'm an addict. Although this John quit using 25 years ago. Is it appropriate to call them recovering addict? By calling them recovering addict, are we helping them? Or are we making the situation worse? Today, here on this stage of TED, I would like to present an idea that probably has never been presented before on this stage of TED, that once an addict is not always an addict. There are two groups of people. One who believes that once an addict is always an addict, while the other group believes that once an addict is not always an addict. I'll give some evidence, and let's see what, what does the evidence, evidence suggest. And then you can decide which group you want to support. I'll start with the physical evidence. If we look at our skin, if we look at our human body and the skin, we shed our skin cells. Every shower we take, we shed our skin cells. The same goes with the intestinal lining and stomach lining. We replace our stomach cells and intestinal lining cells every 24 hours. Same goes for the red blood cells. We replace red blood cells every 120 days. And we replace the white blood cells every four to five hours. Same goes with our hair. With every haircut, we lose previous hair and new hair grows. Same with nails. We clip nails, the old ones disappear, new ones grow. So we are not the same person physically that we were last year. I'm not the same person I used to be last year. Then how can you be the same person you were if you were using five years ago and you quit using? How can you be the same person anymore? You're not the same person anymore. Physically, it's not possible. Many people bring this argument that, okay, 
We understand physical evidence that you have given. But what about the neuroscientific evidence? What about the brain damage caused by drugs? Isn't the brain damage caused by drugs permanent? Neuroscientifically, nothing is permanent. There is a phenomenon in neuroscience known as neuroplasticity, which means brain is like plastic. We develop new brain cells, we develop new brain connections, and the structure of the brain also changes with our changes in action, our habits, and our environment. Let me show you some pictures here. As you can see, these pictures on the screen show these pictures, they show the brain of a person who was using drugs and after he quit using. If you see, the brain starts to heal. That's what the picture is showing. And that's the neuroscientific evidence. Another study shows the receptors. The receptors are changing. The brain structure and the function changes with time just by quitting drugs. So neuroscientifically, if you have quit using drugs, your brain has started to change. You're not the same person anymore. You're not the same person anymore that you used to be last year neuroscientifically, and it is not possible that you will be the same person if you quit for so long and your brain doesn't change. The brain structure does change. Another evidence many people bring is the genetics. So many people bring this argument that drug addiction runs in my genes, right? So even if I quit using, I'll still be an addict. And that's a very good question. There is a phenomena I want to mention. It's called epigenetic modification. According to epigenetic modification, our gene expression changes with our changes in action, habits, and environment. There was a study conducted in 2013 on rats. They took those rats and they let them smell cherry blossoms. And after they smelled cherry blossoms, these rats were administered electric shock. As a result, the rats developed signs of fear. They did that again and again, every time they developed signs of fear. Now, they let these rats reproduce. When the new generation of baby rats developed, they did the same thing with them. They let these baby rats smell cherry blossoms. Now, this time, they did not administer electric shock, but these baby rats, they showed signs of fear. Not only that, they further reproduced this second generation. The third generation also showed the signs of fear just by smelling cherry blossoms. The sign of fear was transferred to the third generation. Epigenetic modification studies are also done on smoking, and a lot more is being studied right now. So yes, our gene expression does change with our actions, habits, and environment. Another argument many people bring is that, okay, we agree with you neuroscientifically, physically, and with genetic expression. We are not the same person. But what about the chronic illness? Drug addiction is a chronic illness. So how can I get rid of a chronic illness? Isn't it lifetime? Remember, obesity is also a chronic illness. So if somebody is obese and he loses weight and develops six packs, super fitness, will you still call him a recovering obese? 
No, you won't call him a recovering obese. Some people bring argument that what about diabetes and hypertension? They don't leave us alone for the rest of our life. This comparison, I believe, is not correct. Because in diabetes and hypertension, to remain healthy, you need to just keep taking medication. But in drug addiction, you just quit using drugs, and you will start to become better and better. However, in many instances, just by changing lifestyle, the lifestyle modification can be enough to improve your diabetes and hypertension. After all of this, another evidence that many people try to bring is the argument of sin. Many people believe drug addiction is a sin. So people may argue that, OK, drug addiction is a sin. So how can I get rid of it? First of all, I don't believe it is a sin. It is a chronic illness. But let's say, for the sake of discussion, today, let's assume that it is a sin. And somebody quit using five years ago. Is it appropriate to call this person a recovering sinner? We all are sinners, aren't we? Is there anyone who can claim that he had never sinned in his life? So should we all start calling ourselves recovering sinners? I asked this question to my ex-supervisor, Ms. Hattie Smith-Miles. She passed away lately. She was one of the legends in the field of drug addiction treatment. It's not an exaggeration to say that she probably treated thousands of people with drug addiction. When I asked her this question, I was so happy to hear this, that she also agreed with me that the philosophy that once an addict, always an addict is incorrect. And calling anyone recovering addict is also not the right thing to do. And it is coming from an expert who spent around 50 years treating drug addiction. After listening to all of these pieces of evidence, some people may bring this argument that, OK, I agree, or we agree that structurally, physically, neuroscientifically, we are not the same person anymore. So does that mean we can now use recreationally? Can we use drugs for fun? The answer is no. You cannot use drugs recreationally. Just like an ex-obese person who develops super fitness cannot go back to the bad diet, cannot eat unhealthy food. Similarly, you should not use recreationally. Because you are at risk of developing drug addiction. You are not an addict anymore, but you are still at risk of developing drug addiction. I do know I did mention before that the brain structure changes, gene expression changes. So it is possible that you quit using drugs and your gene expression could have changed. But you don't know if it has changed right now or not. If you quit using last year, you don't know how much of your gene expression has changed, how much your brain expression has changed, uh, how much your brain structure has changed. You don't know this. So the answer is no, you cannot use recreationally. Now, am I the first person to say this? That once an addict, always an addict is not correct? The statement is incorrect? No, I'm not the first person to say this. If you go to the big book of recovery, it is clearly mentioned that people should be called as recovered addict, not recovering addict. So I'm not the first person to say this. I'm probably the first person to say this on the stage of TED, but I'm not 
the first person to say this. Anyways, I think I have given sufficient evidence to prove that the statement, once an addict, always an addict, is incorrect. And calling yourself a recovering addict is also not the right thing to do. But if you still want to say that, if you want to call yourself a recovering addict, it helps you, it heals you, it's OK, and it's fine. However, I firmly believe that calling oneself as a recovering addict may do more harm than good. It may give you a message that you had never recovered. It may give you a message that you are still the same person. It may also give you a message that no matter how hard you work on your recovery, you will never change. Now, I would like to address the patients with drug addiction or people whose lives have been affected with drug addiction that don't live in the past. You're not your past. You're not even the same person you were last year. Then how can you be the same person you were five years ago or 10 years ago if you have quit using for so long? And remember, we are what we repeatedly do. We are what we repeatedly do. So if you, by accident, relapse or slip, just stand up, work on your recovery again. One relapse doesn't make you an addict because we are what we repeatedly do. So set goals in your life, find purpose, live a happy, healthy, successful life. And don't look into your past because it doesn't matter where we come from. All that matters is where we are going. Thank you.